Hi, it's Bob the teacher here again. Just preparing for the next experiment. Have you washed your hands? Hey, it's you again. I remember you. Let's do some science. Hello again, welcome to part two of our experiment. What I've done, you may see, is to fill each of the glasses with water right up to the brim. And I've got one of these. Do you know what one of these is? It's a measuring jug and it measures the volume of liquid in millilitres, mils, 500 mils, 400, 300, 200, 100, and halfway between 250, 350, 450. So we can measure the volume of the water in the cups, which of course is the same as the volume of the air in each cup. Let's start with the smallest one. Can you see the volume? Between 200 and 300 millilitres. I'd say that's close to 250 millilitres. Let's make a note of that. Let's try the middle size glass. Can you see what's the volume of the water in the middle size glass? I think that's close to 350 but maybe a little less, maybe 340 millilitres. Let's try the very big glass. We may have to tip this twice. Well, we've got 500 millilitres here and the glass is still not empty. So let's keep that in mind. Let's remember 500. And we'll add the extra. And the extra, can you see? It's another 100. So that's like 600 millilitres in all. So the total volume of this glass is 600 millilitres. So here are our results on the sheet that we've been using and what I've done is write the results down in a table form. This always makes it easier to make sense of patterns. Can you see an easy pattern? See if you can complete our easy pattern sentence. The candle burns, blah, 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 in glasses where the volume is, blah, blah, blah. And we've got these words to choose from. Can you find the words that complete the sentence for our results? The candle burns longer in glasses where the volume is greater. Correct. Well done. That's our conclusion for this science experiment. But we're not quite finished. See what we can do next.
So let's start with our table of results. There it is. And what I've produced next to it is a chart where we can turn our results into an easy pattern to see. Let's have a look at the chart. Ah, I've got the volume of the air in the glass in millilitres along this horizontal line. Notice that the biggest volume was 600 mils, therefore my line has to have numbers equally spaced up to 600. I had to plan where to start my graph. The times go right up to 28 seconds and so on the vertical line I started at zero and the burning time in seconds goes up to 30 which is bigger than 28 so I can fit everything on this space in the graph paper. Let's see how we can turn the results into the shape of a graph. Now we have a chance to turn our results into a shape on a graph. The first result is a volume of 250 mils which took 10 seconds. Let's find the volume of 250 along the graph line. 200, here it is, 250. I'll put my pen along this line. And then we need to find the time of 10 seconds because that's the burning time for this size of glass. Here it is and the horizontal line means that these two lines connect here and that's the place where I'm going to put my very first point. We call this a data point on the graph. Let's do the second one. A volume of 350 mils took 15 seconds. So back to the graph, let's find 350 mils. It's bigger than 300, here it is, 350 mils. And here's its line. And now I'll find the line for 15 seconds. 6, 8, 10, 12, well there isn't 15. But what can we do? We can imagine that there's a space in between 14 and 16 and that's where 15 lives. So 15 will be along here, halfway along, and its line is there and it meets the 350 mil line and here's the point, our second data point. And now time for the third result. A volume of 600 mil took 28 seconds. Where's 600 mils on our line of volumes? It's right up here, right at the end. So it's the very last line on my piece of paper, all the way up here. And let's see if we can find 28 seconds. Here's 28 seconds, and here's the 28 second line. And it's going to meet the 600 mil line here. This is our third point. So now we have all three data points on our graph. So let's have a look at our three data points. Do you notice anything? They look to me as if they're almost in a line. In fact, I'd say they're in a pretty good line. And in science, what we can do is we can join these dots by drawing a line. It doesn't have to go through all the dots in the middle, but it can go through the pattern that they're making. 
This is called the best possible line. The line of best fit. And I'm going to continue our line all the way down here. Because I think that if we had some smaller volumes, we could probably use this line to predict the burning time. And that's our graph. And here's your challenge. I have a glass here and the volume I've measured to be 200 mils. And if I put this glass over our candle, how long would the candle burn for using our graph? Using our graph. 200 mils, how long would the burning candle last? That's a challenge for you. And I've got another glass here, which is even bigger. And I measured this volume to be 300 mils. Can you use the graph to predict how long the candle will burn for if I used this glass? Use the graph. Over to you, scientists.